Hello and welcome back to my channel Learn SST. So today we are going to do a lesson from grade 5 UE SST Science and Innovation in the Golden Age of Islamic Civilization. So without wasting much of the time, let's get started. So here we have the learning objectives to examine the examples of technological innovation in the golden age of Islamic civilization. To understand how science developed from the earlier ideas of others. To list examples of entrepreneurship. UA link. Various UA astronomers, mathematicians and scientists have contributed in the golden age of Islamic civilization. The CC link. It's linked with science as well as maths as the topic has reference of both the subjects in it. And it is the mind map which we have to do it. I've written a few inventions over here. You can add some more points of your own. So before I proceed further, just a humble request as always to please subscribe to Learn SST. Now what exactly was this period all about? So during the golden age of Islamic civilization, people wanted to understand more about the world and how it worked. Muslim scientists made innovative achievements in engineering, agriculture, medicine, astronomy, and mathematics. Cities in the Islamic world and running water, sewage systems, and water clocks, people learned how to use herbal medicine from the Chinese. They wrote books on plants and soil, irrigation, and gardening techniques that were translated into Spanish and French in the 19th century scene. Muslim astronomers improved on the Greek knowledge of the movements of the sun and the planets to accurately calculate the passing of time. They could predict which day of the week events would fall on and accurately predict moon phases. So this was really a golden period of Islamic civilization. Why? Because there was so much of progress, not only in one field, but it was throughout uh, various spheres or various fields of human activity. Muslim mathematicians improved upon the mathematic concepts of the Greeks. They came up with a way to solve practical problems when not all the factors were known. They called it the science of restoring what is missing and equating like with like or algebra, a word we still use today. During this time, a numbering system using the concept of zero as a digit. So the Muslim mathematicians have brought mathematics to one step further. And uh, wherever there were loopholes, like wherever there was gaps, uh, which was left by the Greek mathematicians, so that was filled by uh, the Muslim mathematicians. And over here, you can see the word which we still use today is algebra. So this has been picked up from the Muslim mathematicians who often use this word. And the numbering system, the concept of zero digit, all this you find it in uh, the golden period of Islamic civilization. Another important development was happening and at that time society valued a high level of eloquence in spoken as well as in written Arabic language. Printing spoken words on paper and translating the works into different languages preserved and spread ideas, thoughts and advances developed at this time. So it was not only in one field as I have told you. It was in science, it was in medicine, it was in mathematics, so also in literature. So you find it was thoroughly a period or rather a golden period of Islamic civilization where in, in every sphere of human activity you find so much of development. Now the paper making technology spread from China through connections with traders along the Silk Road. So Silk Road was the road which the merchants used to carry their merchandise right from China to Europe. But they were not only taking the uh, silk or the other materials from one place to another, but there was so much of intermingling of the culture. They got to learn so many things from each other. So the paper, which was a secret of the Chinese, slowly and steadily it was out and the paper making technology spread from China to different parts of the world with the help of these traders who were trading on the Silk Road. Muslim scholars began translating scientific and philosophical works from the original languages such as ancient Greek, Indian and others into Arabic. 
Now this is again a very good sign wherein you have the Muslim scholars doing all this work of translating the knowledge and the immense knowledge which was in the form of Greek language or it was in Indian language or it was in Arabic. So all that, I'm sorry, uh, in different languages and it was translated into Arabic. So the philosophical works, the scientific works, all that was translated so that the people of Arabia in this region could read it, understand it and take science and mathematics one step further. In this way, huge libraries of information were created. Later information would be rediscovered by Europeans during the European Renaissance. This is activity one. Very much from the textbook, please go through. Activity two, it's a matching activity, a very simple activity you can go through. This is again activity three from the textbook, please see. Activity four, it's an ordering activity you can go through. Activity 4 continued. Activity 5, what is the meaning of an entrepreneur? And then you have the two huge, big giants of uh, the business world. So I've written down a few information about it. You can add some more points of your own. This is Activity 6, again from the textbook. This is a theory activity where I have put up a few questions here and there. So here I come to the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching my channel Learn SST. If you have really liked my video then please be generous enough to give me a like, share it with your friends, with your classmates and with all those people who really need to know uh, what exactly is MSc all about. And uh, Please do subscribe to my channel. See you next time with my new video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.